Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on how to configure Office 365 Sync to automatically provision Microsoft Office 365 accounts to Enterprise Vault.Cloud Archive accounts. There are three prerequisites to complete today's training. The first is that you have access to a supported browser, which is either Internet Explorer 11, Microsoft Edge, or Mozilla Firefox. The second is that you have administrator level access to the management portal for Enterprise Vault.Cloud. And the last prerequisite is that you have the credentials of a Microsoft Office 365 account under which Office 365 Sync can do the following. Run Office 365 PowerShell commands to synchronize the Office 365 accounts and run Office 365 Exchange Web Services to deploy personal.cloud web folders. Okay. So provided that I have all the prerequisites, I'll start by going to my management portal. I'll first select user management found under my config on the upper left hand side of the screen. From the user management screen, I'll choose how to provision the accounts. Since I want to use Office 365 to provision, I will choose manage account provisioning remotely. Then I'll check using Microsoft Office 365 and click save. After clicking save, I'll select go to the next step. Now the my configuration screen is shown. As you see here, I still have three areas to configure shown by the blue informational marks. Those are Office 365 config, provisioning and Office 365 sync. Let's start by going to the Office 365 config to enter the Microsoft Office 365 credentials. This is the Office 365 config screen. I'll briefly go over the settings on this page. On this screen, you can choose to synchronize Office 365 shared mailboxes or not. By default, this option is not checked. Please note, if you select this option, every shared mailbox is targeted for synchronization in all of your Microsoft Office 365 domains and are billed in the same way as user mailboxes. Next is mailbox delegation permissions. You can choose what to do with the delegation permissions that are applied to Office 365 mailboxes. Then we have the PowerShell credentials and the Exchange Web Services credentials. And finally, the Sync Scheduler. Since we're focusing on the credentials at this time, let's go to the PowerShell credentials section where I'll add the Microsoft Office 365 credentials for my organization. Since the Exchange Web Services credentials are the same as the PowerShell credentials, I'll leave the check mark for use the same credentials as PowerShell. Then to test the credentials, I'll select test. After the test is successful, I'll click on save. Now that I have the credentials set, I can move on to the provisioning settings by clicking on next and then clicking on the provisioning link. From the provisioning screen, I can set the domains to provision. And for this tutorial, I will provision all domains in my environment. Next, I'll set the accounts in Office 365 that I want to be provisioned. I can specify only to provision users who belong to a distribution list or to all users. I'm gonna leave it to provision all users in my organization. Now, in order for emails to be archived in Enterprise Vault.Cloud, a journaling rule will need to be created. If you have already created a journaling rule in Microsoft Office 365 to send to Enterprise Vault.Cloud, select manually provision journaling in Office 365. If not, you have archive administration configure a journaling rule automatically in Office 365. I haven't created a journaling rule yet, so I'll leave it as is. Our next step is to set the personal archive settings by expanding personal archive deployment options and filling out the configuration options that I want. I don't want to deploy web folders now, so I'll uncheck that box. I do, however, want to enable personal archive access, so I'll enable this option. Last, I'll set up notification options so that when a new user account is created in Enterprise Vault.Cloud during the Office 365 sync run, it will notify my system administrators via email. Now that I'm all finished with the settings, I'll click Save and Set Journaling. Once completed, I'll click on Go to the next step. The final step is to set a schedule on when the Office 365 sync will run. We'll do that by going back to the Office 365 config section. From this section, I'll select On for the sync scheduler pick a start date and time, and set the repeat to every one day. Then I'll save. That's it. When the Office 365 sync runs on the schedule, it will create new user archive accounts 
for new Office 365 mailboxes that are provisioned. I'll go ahead and do a run now on the task so I don't have to wait for the schedule. You can see the sync report by clicking on the view link next to the sync run. Now let's talk about what happens to a provisional Office 365 account. If you delete or unlicense an account in Microsoft Office 365, then during the next synchronization, Office 365 Sync will disable personal.cloud access and suspends archiving for the account. New emails for the account are not archived, but existing emails remain available for e-discovery. Office 365 Sync will append the email address of the archive account with disabled on date, where date is the date and time when archiving was suspended. If you subsequently restore or relicense the account in Office 365, then during the next synchronization, Office 365 Sync re-enables personal.cloud access and resumes archiving. If you set an account signed status to blocked in Office 365, then during the next synchronization, Office 365 Sync disables personal.cloud access to the account. New emails for the account continue to be archived. If you subsequently set the sign-in status back to allowed, then during the next synchronization, Office 365 Sync re-enables personal.cloud access. Thanks so much for watching today's video. Remember, if you have any questions about enterprise vault.cloud, you can always reach out to our 24 by 7 by 365 support line, or you can go to the Veritas support website where you can find all of our documentation and even open a support case at veritas.com support. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.